NetCredit is here to say yes to a personal loan or line of credit when other lenders say no. Apply in minutes and get a decision as soon as the same day. If approved, applications are typically funded the next business day or sooner. Loans offered by NetCredit or lending partner banks and serviced by NetCredit. Application subject to review and approval. Learn more at netcredit.com slash partner. NetCredit. Credit to the people. High Five Casino lets you play your favorite slot and live table games like Blackjack with the chance to redeem for real cash prizes. High Five Casino has a giant selection of over 1,200 games, including hundreds of exclusive games only found on High Five Casino. It's always free to play, and free coins are given out every four hours. Ready to have your own High Five moment? Visit HighFiveCasino.com. That's High, the number five, Casino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. Must be 21 years or older. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me, as always, is a man who knows that if you ain't got Mojo Nixon, then your store could use some fixing. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain. That's right. You better call someone who cares. It's good to be seen and good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Today, we are very happy and excited to be featuring ghoulish delights from the great people over at Stone Brewing in beautiful Escondido, California. This is a seasonal beer, so don't hit the snooze button. Ghoulish Delights is actually what Stone calls a one-batch dispatch. Ghoulish Delights is a dark lager with maple syrup and oak. ABV, 8.7%. This is a beer of the highest quality. The brewers at Stone used bourbon oak chips and Vermont maple syrup garage grade five out of five bottle caps. And let's give some thanks and praise to our good garage friends who are of the highest quality themselves. First up, a shout out to Skylar Gorski in Denver, Colorado. And a big shout out to Rachel in Asheville, North Carolina. And here's a shout out to Reggie Forbes in Grand Island, Nebraska. And we also have a shout out to Marion in springfield virginia and last but certainly not least we have katie and maddox a double fisted cheers to our friends katie and maddox in aurora and everyone we just mentioned they went to truecrimegarage.com clicked on the pint glass helped us fill up the fridge for this week's set of shows and for that we thank you yeah b-w-e-w-r-u-n beer run make sure you go to truecrimegarage.com and sign up on the mailing list so you're in the know We love to send out promo codes to the store page. So treat yourself at truecrimegarage.com. And Colonel, that's enough of the business. All right. Thank you, Captain. Everybody gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Uh, It was like down in the bushes, but I saw a plane inside the vehicle. Okay, see, they're on the westbound I-10? Yes. Yeah, just, just north of the highway. I don't really know what it is, but um, I can tell you. Okay, unknown vehicle. Okay, anyone, you said there's people outside the vehicle? I believe I saw at least one person outside, yeah. You heard it there in the 911 call. This was received about a vehicle on fire. The call comes in. This is the early morning hours of April 17th, 2023. 
According to police, the 911 call was received at about 12.30 a.m. on April 17th. The fire department responded, but while they were there extinguishing the flames, the firefighters noticed someone in the back seat of this vehicle. The Department of Public Safety at approximately 1.40 a.m. notified and dispatched several sheriff patrol cars to this scene. So we have the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They're at the scene now, and they're responding shortly after 2 a.m. They We have about five cars there, five officers and patrol cars on the scene by 2.12 a.m. at the very latest. The vehicle was located sitting on the north shoulder of I-10. This is a freeway right around the 85-mile marker. The vehicle that is found in flames is a white 2018 Chevrolet Malibu. Now, we don't get a very detailed description of the scene here, Captain, but we we have that vehicle information, and we have a pretty basic description of a female occupant in the back seat of the vehicle who appeared to be deceased when first responders arrive on the scene. Yeah, so pretty quickly, law enforcement's going to learn it's all hands on deck. This is a murder scene. Yeah, sadly, the female occupant in the back seat of the vehicle who appeared to be deceased, sadly, that was the actual case. And unfortunately, this is already a, a situation where they did not need to, and there was no reason to attempt to perform life-saving measures th- in that moment. So later, the sheriff's office would determine that the deceased female occupant found in the back seat of this vehicle was 22-year-old Mercedes Vega. She's pronounced dead at the scene. From my understanding, this vehicle is found just west of Tonopah. This is desert. There is nothing out there. Tonopah is approximately 50, a five zero mile drive west of the great city of Phoenix. And this is about 10 miles further west than that little city. This is the most common route that one would take when driving from Phoenix out to Los Angeles. The 911 caller was identified. And he has cooperated extensively in this investigation. To be perfectly clear here, he didn't see the body in the backseat of the car. He just saw flames. He called this in via his cell phone as he was driving on the 10 and continued along his journey while on the phone and after the 911 call ended. So this is just somebody saw something and they're saying something phoning it in. Hey, this is what I see. I'm driving out here on I-10 and there's a vehicle on fire. Now, one thing that I find interesting, there's a few things that are interesting about this 911 call. The first is his description. Now, keep in mind, he's traveling at 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 a rate of speed here down the highway. So we can't say with great certainty how good of a look he got at what he's reported. But based off of his words on the 911 call here, Captain, one thing he says is he says, I can see a flame or he says, I can see flames inside the vehicle as he's driving past it. So that's not clarification if the outside of the vehicle were on fire, too. But based off of reports that we would later have the opportunity to review, it sounds like the vehicle fire was started from inside. And that is what our witness is seeing when he calls. Hey, there's this vehicle on the side of the road and I can see flames inside. He also notes and says that I can see somebody down there. That's exactly what he says down there by the bushes. I find this incredibly interesting. The 911 person responding to the call, the answering the call. They're called the 911 operator. Dumbass says to him, you can see two people. And he says, no, just one. Keep in mind what's going on here. If you're the dri- if you're this guy driving along, you see this vehicle on fire. He's doing the right thing by calling 911, notifying them. It doesn't sound like this is a vehicle that's just blazing, right? A fire that's just blazing and flames and flames and flames. 
it sounds like an isolated fire inside the vehicle that he's seeing and reporting. But if you're the if you're this guy traveling along, you're probably assuming look, vehicle vehicle fires happen. They you know, a vehicle can malfunction, something goes wrong with it. What was the poor what was the old thing that they were saying for years they were calling Ford Explorers, Ford Exploders, because they had some terrible recall they had to do because the Explorers kept catching on fire. All of us, most of us who have traveled the freeways frequently, eventually you'll see a vehicle either on fire or one that has been recently put out by the good people of the fire department. So this is not uncommon. And I'm guessing that he's under the assumption that, well, the person I saw outside of the vehicle probably it was the driver of said car had to get out of the vehicle because it was on fire. So he probably thought, Hey, I'm calling this in to not just get this fire put out, but to help this person that I saw spotted near the vehicle as I was driving along. Unfortunately, what we don't get captain is a great description of the person that he saw near the vehicle, because what we would later learn is this vehicle doesn't belong to the victim who was found in it. And it also clearly does not belong to the person that was seen on the side of the road. Yeah. And if you're law enforcement, this gets difficult because what do we know about evidence being destroyed? Water can destroy evidence pretty well. And so can fire. Now, not only do you have a a murder scene, a murdered victim, but somebody that obviously was trying to cover it up. Make no mistake about it. This wasn't a situation where the, this person died in the vehicle from the vehicle fire. No, the, this was an attempt, like the captain's pointing out, to destroy physical evidence at a scene and leave the victim there inside of this vehicle. Let's continue through the known details of the crime scene before we get into some other pertinent information. A medical examiner's report revealed the evil that the victim faced before passing, before the murder. She had blunt force injuries, a gunshot wound, and the odor of bleach was detected in her or around the larynx of the victim. Again, this is 22-year-old Mercedes Vega. She lived in Tempe. She lived nearby. Gloves and bleach were found in the front of this vehicle. Let's talk about these blunt force injuries and the gunshot wound a bit here before moving on. So the gunshot wound is primarily reported to have been as she was shot in the arm. There is one report out there that says that she was shot in the head, but I I don't think that that was the case here, Captain. I think that was just a typo or some bad information because every other report that we were able to review say that she was shot in the arm. The blunt force injuries seem to be primarily on the the head of our victim here. It doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to deduce the situation of if you're if you have this bleach odor coming from the the throat of the victim per the medical examiner's report. Yeah. Uh, well, bleach a bleach container or bottle was found in the front portion of this vehicle gloves too. Right. So we have somebody here who, who likely used gloves at the, in the commission of this crime and probably just took them off or, or bought a, an excessive amount of gloves. We've seen that in several cases and left left these gloves along with the bleach inside this vehicle who belongs to who knows who we have this poor victim that's found in the back. And like you stated, it's not her car. We don't know who owns this car, but what we always say, it's easier to find a car. So if you have the car, you can find out who it's connected to. And her father, so Mercedes Vega's father, and I'm sure her mother believes this as well and feels the same. He feels strongly that the car could be the key to unlocking this mystery. Yeah, I, I would agree. So what we have here, this, this is what we do know. The vehicle that Mercedes is found in, th- this is, we cannot stress this enough. It's a very big part of this mystery. The vehicle was not hers. This is the white Chevy Malibu. It did not belong to Mercedes Vega. The vehicle had a salvaged title. 
Now, we have AZ Family News 3, uh, Arizona Family News, who, working with the police, and look, the police already did this work behind the scenes, but right. for this portion of the story to reach to the public, it had to be the, the news station that uncovered this information. They figured out who this vehicle once belonged to. It once belonged to a, and I'm just going to, I'm going to simplify her name a bit. It, it is public record, but it's not, it's not super out there, but the vehicle used to belong to a miss case. And she openly spoke to the news about what she knew about the vehicle that, that she once owned. So this vehicle was involved in an accident and it was totaled at the scene of that accident. So the technically we have a salvage title, but technically the vehicle no longer belongs to this Miss Case. In fact, if you review some of the reports on this case, the actual owner at this point would appear to have been State Farm Insurance Agency, which makes complete sense based off of what this woman is saying about the vehicle. She says, I had the vehicle for a short period of time. Uh, I was involved in a terrible accident. The vehicle was totaled by the insurance company, right. and the last time I saw it, it was being towed off to a lot. It was on the back of a tow truck. So possibly somebody stole it from that lot? That has to be what happened. I would like to know what I do, what we don't know is if it's totaled, there, I would think there would have to have been some repairs or considerable repairs to this vehicle at some point. But And, and then what is the condition of the vehicle? Like, did how does it appear to law enforcement that this vehicle was was stolen, right? Does it look as simple as, well, somebody got the keys, hopped in it, started it up, and drove it off the, the salvage lot? Right. Or, you know, did somebody bust out a window and have to have to jimmy rig this thing so that they could they could take it off of the lot? Which could be fairly easy given the state of the vehicle. We don't know what condition this vehicle was in. But well, then it we, makes you wonder if the the lot has any cameras and it, can we figure out who stole this vehicle? But I do know that you can buy a car off of somebody with a, a salvage title. Yes, you absolutely can. And so I don't know if the lot purchased it from State Farm or or how that all worked itself out. Sometimes it can be a situation where if a vehicle is determined to be abandoned which can happen with totaled vehicles or vehicles that have been in an accident and they're towed off to a lot. Sometimes insurance companies will leave them there. Sometimes people will leave them there. Yeah. And then at some point the vehicle becomes the property of the, the lot or junkyard owner. Very mysterious, this whole vehicle, but this adds a little background information for the vehicle of who it once belonged to and how it may have gotten to be involved in this horrific murder while we're at it here captain i want to make sure we mentioned az family news three we also have news 12 and ktar news that's a radio station 92.3 fm have all done great work covering this case since the beginning yeah so we want to give them a shout out because most of our source materials coming from from those three outlets specifically with a brianna whitney from az family in particular having done a great job with this very difficult story. We don't know how Mercedes got there. We don't know why she's there. We don't know whose car this is or who was controlling the car. We don't know who's leaving the scene. But what do we know about the victim? Who is Mercedes? Yes, let's hit some background information. What do we know about the victim? What do we know about this area in particular? So Mercedes Mariana Vega was only 22 years old when she was abducted and killed. And we we know this is an abduction because of how she's found. And we know that right away because she's found in a vehicle not belonging to her. From a young age, her parents say that she was a confident and driven girl. Her personality was magnetic. Her parents say that she was going to be an amazing mom someday. She came from a blended family. This is a bit of a Brady Bunch type situation, if you will. The youngest where, one in curls. Yes. When when her parents get married, 
uh, they're each bringing children to the to this new formed family. Mercedes, she went to middle school and high school in the East Valley area and eventually moved into her own apartment, this in Tempe, Arizona. Now, Tempe, Arizona is a city located in Maricopa County, Arizona. The Census Bureau reporting that the 2020 population was over 180,000 people. It's located in the East Valley, like we said, section of Metropolitan Phoenix, which is big and sprawling. That's what she said. It's bordered by Phoenix and Guadalupe on the west, Scottsdale on the north, Chandler on the south, and Mesa on the east. The one thing that may play a factor here in this case is Tempe is the location of the main campus of ASU, Arizona State University. And I say the reason why that might might play a factor here is, unfortunately, Arizona State University at this time and in the year prior were reporting higher than normal crime rates. And it's we're not saying that these crimes are being committed by students of the university, but this is something that I think is somewhat familiar to people that have awareness and, and good knowledge of these larger universities that are spread out through this great country that, that sometimes you get this influx of people and population in a certain area. And therefore crime can sometimes and crime trends can follow that. Yeah. The university and the surrounding areas are occupied, but not by all students. It's actually a small percentage of the students that live in that area. And it's, they're actually more occupied by just people of that similar age, not going to school. Mercedes danced at a club. She was an exotic dancer. She danced at a club two nights a week and she had done so for a little bit of time. And we'll go back in time here in her timeline for reasons that will be obvious when we get to it. But she, at the time of her murder, she was dancing at a club two nights a week. She was saving money to accomplish her goals. She was working to get her personal training or personal trainer certification. Mercedes listed out her goals for 2023 as follows. So she listed this out and this is when somebody passes away, you always have that moment or in most cases where people are going through your loved one's are going through your belongings. And remember, she lived out on her own. My family would be very disappointed in me. Her family finds that she had listed out her goals, her short-term goals for the year of 2023. Yeah. And they were listed as follows. She wrote, pick up a new hobby, be open to relationships that are meaningful, and travel. Great goals. Her mother, Erica Pillsbury, goes on to say, quote, she was just starting to realize that she had so much potential, end quote. One month before she was killed, this was for her birthday. She went and visited Hawaii, which was her favorite place. This was open and known to people that that knew her best. That Hawaii was her favorite place. She had been there several times before. Unfortunately, nobody knew that this was going to be her last visit to Hawaii, She comes back, Captain, and she tells her mom like how special the trip was and how much she loves that place. And she says, Mom, I want my kids to cremate me and spread my ashes in Hawaii because that's where my soul belongs. I have some experience with this because I have been to Hawaii. It's it's hard to explain to people. Anytime somebody says, I want to go to Hawaii, I go, you have to go. But also there's this there's something spiritual or it feels spiritual while you're there. You feel like your your soul is awakening in some capacity. Yes, I I'm a big proponent of uh go and cleanse your your soul and your existence and your reality in the oceans of this beautiful world that we live in. Like it, whether it be Hawaii off the the west coast or off the east coast like there's something to me and i know you're talking hawaii specific i've not been there but to me anytime i get to go to the ocean there's something that's like mentally emotionally and even spiritually healing to me about being in in the ocean and yeah. i 
can't speak for for Miss Vega, obviously, but clearly she felt that that is where her soul belongs. I mean, for for someone to say that at her young age of 22 and to have that, I mean, that's almost a, a brilliant observation by a young person to tell parents, one day I want my kids to spread my ashes there because that's where my soul belongs. Yeah, and like I said, I I I agree with her, but it could have been the mojitos or it could have been the shirtless buff male hula dancers. But I felt an awakening, my friend. <laughs> That's right. Well, th- this thing, this portion seems a bit trite here, but I think this is important to the case as well. Because this gives us a little bit of insight into the dynamics of her family. And Mercedes' parents, this is Tom and Erica Pillsbury, they said that, look, we we are very close to our daughter. We are very close to, to our kids, but very close to Mercedes in particular. And furthermore, they say we were in constant communication with her adding that if there had been any safety concerns, if if Mercedes had any safety concerns or people that she was suspicious of, they said Mercedes would have told them this. So, yeah, and I'm not victim blaming quote. I am not victim blaming, but the, the profession that she was in those clubs attract some some bad stuff and but i'd also say that just about any bars when i played in a cover band those bars didn't always just attract people that were going out for a good time over the weekend no they can certainly attract some unsavory characters to to put it politely and look There is a reason why these clubs escort the women to their vehicles. Yeah. After their, after the shift is, yeah, after their shift is over. And look, we're going to see things in her timeline. We're going to see actions by our victim to, that will notify us and make us understand that she was concerned about her safety. And she wasn't dumb. She was, I, I, I would wager Franklin on this and I feel very confident here, captain. She would not have worked at a club that she felt unsafe. I, I, f- I feel that very strongly. Now, is there a connection between her murder, her abduction and where she worked? Very. Th- that's certainly a possibility. It would be a possibility. Also, if you're a bartender, female or male, there are people that get the wrong impression because you're just giving them friendly service and you you start getting regulars that show up and have an infatuation with you. And that also happens at at strip clubs. Oh, absolutely. I mean probably more so, but 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 even like like I said, going back to the cover band thing, we had women that would show up and that would have an infatuation with the cover band. So I'm not victim blaming at all. It's just a part of the equation that we have to look at if we want to solve this crime. Yeah. And there are, there are men. uh, Unfortunately, I don't know any of them personally, but there are men that will spend their entire paychecks at, at these types of establishments. So if, if, if you flinch at the word infatuation, Right. Don't because you can, one would only spend their entire paycheck if they if they were infatuated, even if it's just fleeting. Now, as we pointed out, arriving on this scene on the side of I-10, immediately the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, they have to understand as soon as they 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 figure out just two simple things. This poor woman that was found in the back of this vehicle, she didn't own this vehicle. Then secondly, the vehicle has a salvage title. So it's rightful to believe that nobody technically, no individual anyway, owned this vehicle. So immediately, if you're an investigator or even just a deputy, you're going, this poor young woman was abducted somewhere 
and killed and then brought to the scene. Now we have to go and figure out where was she abducted from? When was she last alive and well? Hey there, it's Steve Fishman, and this is my trailer for my new podcast release, The Director's Cut of Empire on Blood. If you gotta kill a few people to get what you want in life, so be it. You can build an empire on blood. Whatever it takes to get the information I need. You lie? Yeah, I do. I'm honest about it. So I knew it was all bull. It's time to go. The story begins with two young drug dealers who wear mink and stack cash under their beds. Their relationship phrase, and Calvin Buari goes to prison for two murders. He insists he did not do. You're not going to give up. Oh, no. I can't. I can't. I can't. From the creators of The Burden and my friend the serial killer comes Empire on Blood, the director's cut, with three brand new episodes on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out Empire on Blood. It is a great binge listen. Empire on Blood is an almost unbelievable true crime story about a fascinating case filled with plenty of WTF moments. Go and listen to Empire on Blood podcast tonight. It's spooky season, so it's time for me to be sipping on my pumpkin spice lattes and slipping into my cozy sweater from Quince. Quince is known for their Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50, and it's not just that. All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That includes beautiful leather jackets, cotton cardigans, soft denim, and so much more. How are they able to do that? By partnering directly with top factories and cutting out the costs of the middleman, which passes on the savings to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. And of course, premium fabrics and finishes for that luxury feel in every piece. I absolutely love Quince. I have treated myself to the Mongolian cashmere sweater, and not just one, and not just two, and not just three, but I also love my cozy cotton cardigans. I love the fall time, and I love the fall fashion. So get cozy with Quince. Get cozy in Quince's high-quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com garage for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I n-c-e dot com slash garage to get free shipping and 365 day returns quince dot com slash garage get cozy with quince and enjoy the spooky season check out quince dot com slash garage today this show is sponsored by better help i'd like to take a moment to thank my partner in crime nick He shows up every week and is always respectful of the victims. It's been an honor to work with him. This month is all about gratitude, and along with thanking my partner in crime, there's another person we don't get to thank enough, ourselves. It's sometimes hard to remind ourselves that we are trying our best to make sense of everything in this crazy world, and it isn't easy. Here's a reminder to send some thanks to people in your life, including yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash garage today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash garage. This show is proudly sponsored by BetterHelp. With big wireless providers, what you see is never what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price magically skyrockets. With Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about gotchas again. When Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Not to name names, 
but I have had mobile providers in the past that have a less than reliable service that I have paid much more than Mint Mobile. Like you, I was tired of complicated bills that included new fees and upcharges that made absolutely no sense. Mint Mobile is straight up, great reliable service at a great and fair price. All Mint Mobile plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone, your own phone number, and all of your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's deal and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash TCG. That's mintmobile.com slash TCG. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash TCG. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. If you are ever worried about the safety of your home and family, there's no better time to act. Many of our listeners, many True Crime Garage listeners, have been using Simply Safe to protect their homes, their families, and their businesses for years now. But there are several who have not gone to the website and have not got that peace of mind. Right now, True Crime Garage listeners can get 60% off today just by visiting simplysafe.com slash garage. Simply Safe is a new way to protect your home that stops intruders before they break into your home. Old school systems only take action once someone is already inside your home. That's too late. Simply Safe's Active Guard Outdoor Protection changes the game by preventing crime before it even happens. If someone's lurking around or acting suspiciously, those agents can see them in real time. Talk to them directly, set off your spotlights, and even call the police before they've had a chance to break in. Plus, there are no long-term contracts, no cancellation fees, and it's around $1 a day for all of this protection. I love Simply Safe. Why? Because it simply makes me feel safe. It's the best way to protect your home, your business, your family, your belongings. I was just talking with someone yesterday who said, I do not feel comfortable in my home at night alone. I said, you got to check out Simply Safe. You go to simplysafe.com and you protect your home, protect yourself, and get peace of mind. Quit worrying about what goes bump in the night with Simply Safe. Simply Safe is offering my listeners exclusive early access to their Black Friday sale. This week only, you can get 60% off any new system with a select professional monitoring plan. This is their best offer of the year. Head to simplysafe.com slash garage. That's simplysafe.com slash garage. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, we are back, you filthy animals. Tall cans in the air. Party to the people. Hotel, motel, holiday inn. Cheers to you, Colonel. Cheers to you. Stay thirsty, my friends, and stay filthy. (laughs) April 16th, right? Unfortunately, our victim is found in the very early morning hours of April 17th, and it's not going to take a whole team of bloodhounds to figure out where Miss Vega was abducted from. So we go to the prior, just hours prior. Mercedes Vega is last seen alive and well the night of April 16th, 2023 on surveillance camera footage from her Tempe apartment complex. Hold on. I might be the dumbest boy in school. But does she have identification on her? Is that how they're able to figure out who our victim is? She very likely did. I, I, the, the problem with this case is that they've kept some of the information uh, and I, I I need to rephrase that. I shouldn't say the problem. The problem for the storytelling angle of this case is that law enforcement has kept some of this information very hush hush on the details 
My assumption is that she would have had some form of identification on her. We know that she is identified rather quickly. Yeah, so then we have an address, so then we can go to our com- we can go to our apartment complex, then we can ask them, "Oh, and she lives in a nice place, so she has um the place that she lives in has security and they have video, so now we can see and that it's she's- working." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. Which it's is working. Let's give this place uh let's give this place a thumbs up. We don't we don't know how great the place is, but I give it three thumbs up. Three thumbs up because it, cameras are working. If this is your first garage show, we've reviewed hundreds of cases and it feels like seventy five to eighty percent of the time the surveillance camera f- cameras are not operating properly, whether it be from yeah. an apartment or from a gas station or a school. Sometimes they're working, but there's it's such bad quality that it doesn't really matter or they're working, but the timestamp isn't correct. Yeah. Well, these ones were working and I, they released police released a very small snippet of security camera footage. Now, yeah. We say released a small snippet. We do. We don't know. We just don't know how much they have. Um, th- this could be all that they have. I don't know the positioning of these cameras, but to to do my best to try to describe it for everyone, the camera footage comes from the parking garage of her apartment complex. So she's seen walk walking into the parking garage and her apartment is not on the first floor. You can see her entering the parking garage and it appears that she's entering via like a staircase or a stairwell. This is at nine seventeen PM. Remember the, the nine one one call comes in at, it was about 1230 AM. We only have about a missing three hours here. We talked about the distance between Tempe and where the vehicle was eventually found. It's every bit of, of 50 minutes, five, zero minutes to maybe closer to an hour. So if she's alive and well at nine 17 PM and found in this vehicle that's spotted by an eyewitness at 1230, and that's three hours and 15 minutes, roughly. Well, so we have about an hour of that. Yeah, yeah, so we have a small time window in which she was abducted, attacked so, and abducted. Let's think about the the let's try to crawl inside the mind of the abductor here. Because what I when you have this s- small of a window of time that's in question. We don't know everything that took place during that 3 hours and 13 minutes roughly, but it would seem, it would stand to reason to me anyway, that if you're finding gloves and a bleach container and flames inside a vehicle that nobody with a salvage title, this individual arrived, not just willing and, but ready. Yeah. Ready, ready with a vehicle that could be dumped, ready to start a fire, ready to to use bleach to destroy physical evidence and gloves to hide detection. And so I can't imagine for the life of me that that within that little window of time and, and one hour of that has to be spent driving out to the location where she's found that in two hours time after the abduction that those items were purchased. I don't think so. Not for a second. I think this person showed up ready to go. And that would indicate to me that, that a high probability, I think that she was targeted. Well, here, here's, I have so many questions. One, do we know what her schedule was supposed to be that night? Well, that's very interesting too, because she Originally, she was due to meet friends for a lot of reports say she was meeting friends for dinner, but it's pretty uh, late, right? Yeah, but but here's the thing: and she's younger, so well. But but once you hear the whole story, you may change your mind on on the details of this. 
a lot of the reports said she was meeting friends for dinner, but also there are reports that says she was meeting friends at a local Dave and Buster's. So you can, one could have dinner at Dave and Buster's. One could also just go there and play video games and have a few cocktails. Right. But what we do know now is police later determined that yes, she, while she had these plans, she changed her plans and they, they say abruptly, that's the word that they chose to use. She changed her plans abruptly and she decided to go into work that night. Well, anybody that's worked in any service industry knows that if somebody doesn't show up or they're short staffed or whatever, you could get a call that says, Hey, Nick, could you come in and bartend for this evening? And she chose to go into work that night. Now, when they say change her plans abruptly, I would like what we don't know. What's not the clarification that's not provided on that is, did she notify her friends that she wasn't going to meet up with them? Or was it a situation where friends are hanging out and they go, yeah, Mercedes was supposed to show up. I wonder what happened, you know? And then, but, but they speak to her employer, right? Investigators speak to her employer and they're like, yeah, we, we spoke to her on the phone and she was coming into work tonight or last night or the day before, whenever they speak to them. And you can see her on this surveillance footage. So the surveillance footage is, is quite good. It's not grainy. Like you can, you can see her and in in she's wearing a casual outfit. She appears to have a large handbag with her. I know given the occupation, sometimes you're bringing outfits or makeup or things of that nature with you. So she's wearing like a black t-shirt and jeans and she doesn't appear to be stressed out or worried or in fear that something's about to happen. Right. Now we crawl inside the mind of the victim and we go, this poor young woman was probably ambushed. And like, go back to what her parents said. If she were in danger or if she was in fear or suspicious of anybody, we feel very confident telling all of you, the public and the news that she would have communicated that to us. Well, it makes you wonder if her destination was leave my apartment, go right to work. But we also know like when you're getting called into work because somebody didn't show up or whatever, you don't always have to be in a hurry to get there. So is is there a possibility that she had a another stop before she was going to go to work? Well, stop or no stop, it doesn't matter because we get told by law enforcement that she was abducted right there in the parking garage. I wonder if they have any footage of that. That's a good, great question because like with so many other cases, you know, the Delphi case is in trial right now and so many people had eyeballs and earballs on that for years. And one of the big, one of the points of contention with that amongst the masses were, was always, well, do they, we have this little, this little video clip here and we have this audio but do they have any video or audio prior to that or or after what we've been shown? Well, then it also makes you wonder, is this just random? Oh, here's this pretty girl walking in the parking garage. Here's an opportunity. Or is it somebody that was laying and waiting for her? I know where she lives. If If she has a stalker or if she has, again, somebody that is infatuated with her, Oh, I figured out where she lives. I know what her car is. I just now have to go and and wait for her. Yeah, it's very troubling because I can't say with any great level of certainty that I'm correct here, but everything about it tells me that I think she was I think she was targeted simply for the fact that I think that that somebody went to great lengths to hide evidence, to destroy evidence and to convolute the the scene and the movements of the victim and the movements of the perpetrator. And I think that to me, in most cases here, captain one only goes to all of those efforts. If there's some kind of connection between the victim and the perpetrator, because if if it's completely random, then you you don't need to distance yourself so, so much from the victim. Right. Or, or really stage the scene or really, Confuse destroy the evidence yeah because because there's really no ties to you now i guess something if if the perpetrator in this situation would have become aware or knew in advance let's, i i shouldn't say become aware we should say knew in advance because again this killer appears to have shown up 
at the site of the abduction prepared to do what the result was. And again, which so, I think, so maybe they did went to those efforts simply because they knew that there were, there would be surveillance footage. Yeah. Very possible. But I, I lean towards what you were saying. This individual comes prepared. And so how would you, why would you come prepared? Well, no, I guess that makes sense though, too. Uh, if you're just looking for a victim, you would come prepared. You would come prepared. Yeah. But, 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 but to conceal and destroy evidence and yeah. confuse the scene implies that there's either a connection between the perpetrator and the victim, or you knew that there's going to be things like surveillance footage that you would have to, these are hurdles that you have to overcome to to get away with this. I mean, do we have law enforcement telling us whether we should be looking for one killer or two killers? When we go through the de- some more of the details to come, I think many will have a shared suspicion that it it took two to to do this. Um, I mean, they, sim- these are these are not just monsters; these are animals. This is so vicious, and I I don't understand. And, and I'm sure that this case was suggested by some listeners, but we live in a messed up society where we're. In, this has not been talked about enough. This case has not been talked about enough in the sense of we we have information to give out to the public that they could help us. And I think it just simply goes back to what, what it always is. Oh, well, this, this individual, she was a dancer. So I guess she doesn't matter as much. Yeah, the case has been a, a rather big case in the area. There, I did see some reports that it's gone out nationwide, but... But this one is fairly new to us now in in the grand scheme of things. It's unfortunately a fairly recent case. You know, she was she was killed last year. Yeah. And but here's the thing, Captain. We're told that sh- the she's attacked in the parking garage. Right. So they have some evidence. They have something that tells them that they don't just say that on a hunch. But here's, here's the bitch of this. The car that she's found in is not hers. And then her car is not found where it would be parked in the parking garage. Her, she's, she's found dead in a car on the highway and her car, her vehicle is MIA. Then on top of that, don't, don't law enforcement find, I think they find some blood evidence in the garage and that kind of is what I'm guessing is the evidence Unless, like you said, they have the attack on film. Exactly. We just don't know what they do and do not have on film. They've been tight-lipped about that. They have shared a small snippet of the surveillance footage. That's the one that I described where you can see her going about her business, carrying out her day, walking towards her car, getting ready to head off to work. And she doesn't look concerned about what might be around the corner. What we have here, Captain, is they do find the vehicle, and as you suggested, maybe they found some blood evidence or evidence at the scene in the parking garage that is telling them a story, but they're also going to find this vehicle, and once they locate the vehicle, they're going to find evidence with the vehicle that is going to start to tell them a portion of the story as well. Join us back here in the garage, same bat time, same bat channel. And until then, be good, be kind, and don't litter. NetCredit is here to say yes to a personal loan or line of credit when other lenders say no. Apply in minutes and get a decision as soon as the same day. Loans offered by NetCredit or lending partner banks and serviced by NetCredit. Application subject to review and approval. Learn more at netcredit.com slash partner. NetCredit. Credit to the people.